Good morning, Guardians. Briar Rabbit here. Yesterday, PC Gamer published a fascinating interview with Bungie's Luke Smith that covered everything from the story of Destiny 2, the differences between the PC and console versions, and even weapon balancing. I'm going to talk about some of the highlights from the article in this video, but I highly recommend fans of the game, or even people on the fence about it, Click the link in the description and read the full article. There is way more in it than I could cover in one video, and PC Gamer clearly did their homework in preparation. So let's start with the PC version of Destiny 2. When asked how the game would feel for PC gamers who missed the first game, Luke Smith had this to say. In not playing the first Destiny game from 2014, you really haven't missed anything. We're setting up the world for you at the opening of Destiny 2. Now this quote is a bit weird because it could be interpreted to discount players' experiences in Destiny 2 and say the story up to now doesn't matter. I don't think this is his intention, however, and I assume what he is attempting to say is that new players will be brought up to speed in Destiny 2 and shouldn't feel like they missed something. He goes on to explain that new players to Destiny 2 will find that it is a great launching off point, and they wanted Destiny 2 to be a game that you could open up and understand what is going on. When asked about the raid and how it will launch on PC after players have beaten it and discovered its secrets on the console, he said this, That is something that is a non-trivial amount of pain to me as a player, but it's also, in this case, sort of a necessary pain. I will say we will be working tirelessly to unify those two communities as quickly as possible. PC Gamer also asked about the delayed launch on the PC and if it was related to a partnership deal with Sony. Luke Smith denied this, saying, That's categorically false. That is not true. That's actually something I've wondered about aloud, and I'm glad to hear it's not true. Sony's relationship with Destiny and the PlayStation exclusive have caused a lot of animosity in the community, and if this were true, I think it would leave a rotten taste in a lot of players' mouths. Next, he was asked about balancing, and the interviewer made the assumption that tuning to weapons would happen unilaterally between the PC and console versions of the game. Luke was quick to correct this, saying, I wouldn't be so quick to make the assumption that we're going to balance unilaterally. I think that we want to have one design build of Destiny, and the one design build means that we have Exotic A and Exotic A, and they're both the same exotics across the builds for the game but with the specific tunings and the way the guns play in each ecosystem, those are two consumer types with very different needs. Smith was also asked if there would be any way to migrate characters from the console version of the game to the PC, to which he responded, no. There's no plans to do that currently. That is not something players should expect to have for Destiny 2 launch. Sorry, I just don't want to say that, in a way that leaves hope. This actually makes me pretty sad. I'm not sure why this can't happen. Maybe I'm just ignorant on how this stuff works, but it seems that our characters are stored on Bungie servers and that it would be relatively trivial to be able to migrate them between platforms. I honestly think it would be a feature that would be used frequently and actually sell more copies of Destiny 2, but it's not coming, so maybe we can hope for Destiny 3? Smith also talked a bit about the subclasses, and one of the most exciting bits he talked about was the return of the Ward of Dawn bubble on the new Sentinel Titan subclass. I'm actually a bit surprised by this, as Titans already have a new shield ability, the Barricade. But it does make sense. It is without a doubt one of the most useful team support supers in the game, and one of the only ones to dramatically change the landscape of the arena you're fighting in. Moving on to weapons, Smith was asked whether the same weapon could drop as a kinetic or an energy-based weapon. In response, Luke was clear on his answer, saying, No, the exact hand cannon cannot drop as a kinetic or energy. Basically, the weapons have specific assignments. Weapon A will only ever appear as a kinetic weapon, and weapon B will only ever appear as an energy weapon. PC Gamer also asked about weapon balancing and the pain it caused in the community in Destiny 1, and Smith had this to say, 
We have some different tools at our disposal for Destiny 2 because of the way we've built weapons. We're actually going to be able to do some different types of modifications to weapons, where in Destiny 1, we largely modified whole archetypes in large balance patches. Let's say Clever Dragon, the high rate of fire pulse rifle, is really powerful in the current meta. We're going to hit all high rate of fire pulse rifles. In Destiny 2, if we have a weapon that is a specific infractor, we'll have the ability to go in and just touch that. That's great. Sounds like Bungie will now have a jeweler screwdriver to make balance adjustments with instead of a 10-pound sledgehammer that they were using in Destiny 1. Luke also confirmed that there would be no ranking system for the Crucible, but did add for the September launch. However, he would not commit to it being added post-launch either. Again, I highly recommend checking out the full article over on the PC Gamer website where Luke is asked about vault space, the utility of our ships in Destiny 2, and the traveler's role in the story of Destiny moving forward. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.